Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to bring forth your truth to everyone watching and listening right now. I declare burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed right now. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation, Lord. You have blessed us. And now is the season for the manifestation of the blessing. Therefore, everyone is taking their place in you. Marching forward to bring to pass that which you have said. In our nation, see great manifestation and great glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. John, 1 John chapter 5. Now look into your Bible. We stopped at verse 17 yesterday. And I want to look at it again. Verse 16 into 17. It says, If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who sin, who commit sin, not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. Now, I, yesterday, I read this, and the Spirit of God began to um, open my understanding to something, but, but there was no time to share that. I'm going to share it with you now. There are certain things we do Mm. that puts us in a very, very tight situation in life. Now, what I'm about to share with you is very, very important. Talking about the sin people commit, the wrong people do, even as God's children. Now, you remember John the Baptist. Now, you know John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus, you know, right? Yeah. And then also, he senior Jesus with about six months, right? So, now, John the Baptist was in prison. What got him into prison in the first place? See, he had insulted the king. And the king got angry and arrested him. And one time, now this is Jesus' cousin. And one day, John the Baptist haven't been in prison for a while. And I keep hearing about the things Jesus was doing. So one day he sent a message to Jesus. He said, hey, ask him, is he the one? Or should we expect another? And Jesus told the disciples that he sent to him, says, Hey, go tell him what you have seen. The lame is walking, the blind is seen, and the gospel is being preached to the poor. Go and tell him, that's what you saw, what someone told you. And then Jesus now added a statement to that. He says, also tell him this, Blessed is he who is not offended in me. And Jesus didn't do anything about John's case. Until you know the story, John was beheaded and he died because a little girl asked for his head on a platter. Now, there is no way you're going to look at that and tell in truth that that was God's will for the life of John the Baptist. No way. No way. So you look at that and it's sometimes people are confused with these stories and wonder why. And then sometimes because we you know, sometimes want to defend God and defend the person involved. So we say, you know, some things are too high for us. Hey, why don't we ask the Lord? Let him teach us. Is it too high for him to? And remember Jesus said he will guide us into all truths. 
Now, why didn't Jesus do anything to save John? Number one, John wrote here that if you see your brother commit a sin that is not unto death, you will pray for him. The Bible never recorded that Jesus prayed for John the Baptist. There was no record of such. In fact, when he sent the disciples back, look at what he says. He says, tell him, blessed is he who is not offended in me. So Jesus knew that there is a possibility that John will be offended in him. Why would should John be offended in him? Expecting him to do something according to the flesh. And Jesus was not going to do it. So what did John do wrong? And this, this is where we get careful. He spoke against the authority of his day. And he's brought an accusation against the king. Now, listen to me. Lots of people don't understand this. But this is where many people have fallen in life. When you don't respect the authority. Now, I'm not talking about spiritual authority right now. I'm talking about physical authority. When you don't respect the physical authority over you, now, you may disagree with them. This, that's not a problem. But you see, you watch your words. You don't bring an accusation against a physical authority over you. You don't bring such a, you don't bring an accusation to them. So what if they do wrong? Oh, if they do wrong, you go to them and show them they are wrong and pray that they repent. If they don't repent, you take it to the Lord. And let the Lord himself tell you what. If the Lord does not tell you what to do, then don't get involved with it. Don't bring an accusation. Because see, you see, the moment you get into that arena, you are dealing with something that is higher than you. I'm talking about physical authority. I'm not talking about even spiritual authority. You are dealing with something that is higher than you. That is why you find David a wise man. He knew the Spirit of God has departed from the king Saul. He knew. Because he's the one that used to go calm him when the evil spirit troubles him. So he knew. This same David also knew that the anointing for kingship was now resting on him. He knew. Because Samuel poured oil on him. Hey, but guess what? He never told anybody this story. He kept it to heart. See? Now then, the king was after his life. So the king was doing wrong. He was innocent. He didn't do anything against the king. So David ran for his life. And in the whole process, David never for once brought an accusation against Saul. In, he, he actually, twice, he had the opportunity to kill Saul. But he declined. Why did he decline? Look at his statement. I will not stretch out my hand against God's anointed. Why did he call him God's anointed? But he knew the anointing had left him. The anointing is now on him. So why did he call Saul God's anointed? Because Saul was still sitting on that seat as king. As long as the king is on that throne, you don't bring an accusation against him. You may tackle their policies. You may tackle the things they do in terms of um, um, rulership. But you don't tackle. You don't, you don't speak against their personality. Because you see that seat. There is an angel God gives to protect them. I'm telling you, an angel from the Lord. To protect them. And that angel doesn't recognize any human being. You come against him, 
they will put you in your place. Now, this thing causes death. Another thing that causes death is, I'm talking about sin that causes death. Now, you'll be amazed. Okay, continue. See, when the truth comes to you, what your response to it is supposed to be, oh, wow, I've never thought about this before. Okay. I'm going to pray about this. I'm going to ask the Lord about this and let him talk to me. Concern. That's your rest. That should be your rest. That should be the right thing you do. See? Secondly, when, when you sin against the brethren, it can lead to death. When you cheat a fellow believer, when you lie to a fellow believer, it can lead to death. Paul said it, he said, for this reason, many of you are weak and sickly and many sleep, that's die, because they did not discern the body of Christ. You know what sin that leads to death? That's where it is. When you begin to strive with a fellow believer, now the person may be your biological brother, but you see, if you have gone beyond that brotherhood to Christ now, see, because I, someone might be my biological brother, yes, but then when we grow, now as a biological brother, he can talk to me anyhow, you know, you know this is your my brother, so all right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But if we, if both of us have come to the knowledge of Christ, we can't talk to ourselves anyhow anymore. I'll deal with him in Christ. He'll deal with me in Christ. If he, through Christ, brings that biological behavior into it, he may hurt himself. Let he that has ears hear today. And I pray God gives you understanding. Praise <laughs> God. Because, you know, sometimes you can't exhaust these things. Verse 18, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. <laughs> but he who has been born of God keeps himself. So sometimes when you see people talk anyhow, and then you I've seen I've seen these things, you know. You 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 see someone talks, you know, oh, can you imagine this government? They are very stupid, they are very I'm quoting now, you know. They, they are always you know, they are talking in the eye, look at them like does the Holy Ghost does does this person have the Holy Ghost? Because I know the Holy Spirit will not let me talk like this. So I, I'm amazed at how this person is talking like that. See, that's why he says, We know that whoso, whoever is born of God does not sin. Now, what's he saying? He doesn't sin this sin that he's just talking about. Why? But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. You see, so so there's a flaming like there's a flaming sword in that vicinity, and the one who's born of God, when he gets close to that place, he's pulled back by the word of God. So the wicked one will not touch him. So he doesn't get into that place where he sins the sin that causes death. He doesn't get there. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Our time is up. Hallelujah. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.